Hello everybody and welcome back to Whitlings. It has been quite a long time. It's been exactly one month since I last posted. Um, it's been a busy month. Uh, Game Developers Conference came around, had a couple things to take care of, but I'm finally back on the grind again. So I fell victim to one of my classic mistakes, and that is... I'm a little bit scared to do touch input. And so, you know, I did have things to do, things to take care of, but I also did have hours, you know, one hour out of the day that I could have set aside and just powered through. But it took me a long time to conquer that mental block. Now I am back. So, um, let's begin. I think it's time. Oh, I got two of these open. Hey. Oh. <clears throat> I think it's time to start doing touch input. Now, touch input is really important because I think that I'd like this game to be on mobile. And I think touch input would be very intuitive for spinning the cubes. So I'm going to start with an empty scene, and we're basically just going to do some testing. So um, I'm going to brainstorm a little bit. I've been mulling this over in my head for a little bit of time now. And we have a couple challenges ahead of us, right? So the simplest one. is we need to calculate the line direction. And this is not as easy as it sounds because, well, this might be one of the cases where I decide let's do the simple version first, as always, and then let's leave room to improve it later. Because you know right now we've got um, eight separate camera views. And with eight camera views, a lot of the math is already like set in stone. We only have to do a couple extra things. Things I'm not quite too sure what we need to do. I know we're going to need to do them though. However, I was in my brain that has no regard for scope. Um, I was imagining like an AR VR type thing where the user could would have to move their phone around the table in order to see the whole map. So instead of having a button to spin the um, to spin the world or spin the camera around the world, they would have to move around it themselves. I thought that would be pretty cool. Um, and so in that case, we would have infinity camera views. And so the math is going to be a lot more difficult. So I think what I'll do is I'll just save this for later. And I think uh, working within these small confines of just these eight camera views, will actually uh, help, me, help me understand the math at a more fundamental level. So right, we got to calculate the line direction. And I think we need to um, project line into the world. I was also considering unprojecting the um, the cube into 2D space. I think that might be a little bit easier um, because if I unproject it in a 2D space, I can use a line to line test. Well, that's a problem. You've got to think about input, right? So we've got a cube. And I've got my fat finger on it, and I slide like this. Does it have to cross this line? 
if I've got this cube selected and we're out in space over here and I slide, will it rotate the cube? See, these are questions that we need to answer. And I guess we can't really answer it until we create a test bed to answer. So let's do a or unproject cube lines. Um, so once we've projected or unprojected, we can decide spin direction. <clears throat> and you know, I think this unproject might work even better because it, the unprojection is taking the camera position, I guess the camera transform into consideration. So we're unprojecting it onto the user's phone or their screen. One of the good things about Unity is uh, testing for touch input with a single finger is very easy because touch input and mouse input are the same. But I don't think I've really done too much touch input, so this will be a learning experience. Although everything's a learning experience when you get down to it. So I guess before we even calculate the line direction, we need to debug the line points, right? So if I've got my phone and I swipe on it, I want to store an array of all of those points, and I just want to draw them on the screen for some amount of time. This also seems to me like a very good time to create a new scene. I feel like our camera work is pretty solid. We can go back and I'll show that again quickly. Hopefully it doesn't break. That would be funny. So we've got our spins. We've got our flips. And... Okay, yeah, the bottom... What is that sound? Ooh, that was my external drive. I don't know if you could hear the buzzing, but a little bit spooky. So, right, <clears throat> upside down are cube rotation is not working correctly. And I do believe that if we can solve this touch input problem, then it will fix that completely. Because right now we've kind of hacked it together. And I do believe we will still be doing some hacking. But let's move forward. So I definitely want my main camera to be part of my core level objects. And let's apply this. So I'm curious how much work it's going to take to create a new scene. One thing that I've always had on my list, touch input test, I've always had on my list is it should be really easy to make a scene. Super easy. Just drag and drop a few core items, and you're good to go. Core level objects. I can get rid of this, what is this, debug path renderer? I don't need you anymore. Let's reapply this. Um... So let's see, this camera is out, this camera is in, how many breaks do we get? 
One, start target of camera controller. Cool, that's fine. What is this cube updated? Ooh, it's been so long. That's definitely one of the downsides of taking a long break, as you have to go and rediscover what the heck everything is. What? What? Tab isn't setting these anymore? What is happening here? This cube is at the origin. My lighting is completely goofy. Uh, let's go back to our original scene, or at least our camera test. Definitely save. This guy is at zero, zero, zero. Oh, right, it doesn't matter where my camera is. It's automatically going to snap to this start target. Camera controller. Start target is this cube. And let's drop our super beautiful, amazingly artistic skybox. Whoa. There we go. Oh boy. Ooh, okay. What is this cube? Um, let's go to cube updated. Okay, just making sure that the sound of my cat cleaning herself was not <laughs> not registering here. Okay. How about you, Cube Updated? What do you got for me? One tab. Okay, definitely this, oh. So we got cube faders freaking out everywhere. What are you looking for, cube fader? I don't want the fader. I don't care about you. Scrape particle system of cube controller has not been assigned, you know. Let's put that in a conditional. Cube rotators working fine. Cube core 65. Okay. So just sort of cleaning up the scene here, making sure I can spin cubes. Oh. Ooh, 
I came here to do touch inputs, not to... No, that's fine. Every once in a while, you should definitely make a new scene and try and streamline the ease at which you make that new scene. <clears throat> Cube, rotator. Well, I'm glad that still works. That's a little bit strange. So what's happening when I cube rotator? Control P is your friend. Interesting, so we're never even getting to this function. Rotate selected. This is in cube controller update. If selected cube does not equal null. Where's my cube controller? No scrape particle system. Everything else is set up nicely. One step at a time, working up the call stack. Let's try and figure out what is going on. Oh! <laughs> well... W and rotating are obviously happening. I just had my messages turned off, which is hilarious. Rotate selected. If scrape particle system, begin rotate. So we get this rotating, easer, begin ease. This is transform ease, cube rotator. That's got everything set up, if I believe. Cube rotator, easer. Selected rotator in the cube controller. So holding down W is spamming me with messages. Hmm. So that means every frame, it's calling begin rotate. It's, it's actually rotating. Let's debug. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm, so select, rotate, on begin rotate, activate and break all paths.
So we are getting two se oh. What on God's green earth have we done? So, no rotation is our start. Target rotation is this one. Start target, begin ease. On begin ease is null of my transform ease. I don't believe you. What? <clears throat> this is my transform ease that belongs to my cube rotator. It can't be this cube fader. That would be absurd. Whatever, just two random curves. No test fade. So it's almost like it's turning off the right faces. Or it's not. Hmm. Do I have too many faces in here? No, this looks fine. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been looking at this stupid cube the whole time. My cube updated has garbage in here. What is cube updated? What does that even mean? What terrible naming. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we're back to step one. Oh. Um, I think that these pathing things are okay. Because we really don't have a start yet, and I don't care about a start. I care about... I'm going to apply the changes to this cube. I guess cube updated doesn't fade. That's probably why it's cool. Okay. Let's see. To the problem at hand! Touch input. 
So how are we going to architect this? Let's take a moment and think. I use we a lot because I do a lot of lectures and teaching in college. Um, I'm not royalty. <laughs> the royal we. Um, let's see. So we've got some kind of class that will read touch input. We need the ability to fill an empty a point array. We need the ability to draw those points. And this one I'm a little bit tricky on, probably going to need a lot of tuning. Um, we are going to need to calculate the average direction. There's a simple way to do this, but I don't know if it's going to be good. But we'll make it work first, and we will tune it later and improve it. And then I want to draw a line on screen to represent the, I guess, interpreted swipe. That doesn't look like the right spelling. Interpreted. So what would... So this one, this one, and this one are actual features. And these two are, it's not very visually different. These two are for development purposes. So maybe let's split them into two separate classes along this boundary here. Scripts. Um, We'll do a touch input and oh no, this is a totally new machine. I'm not going to have my fancy um, setup. <clears throat> Dang it. That's okay. Do I really need a separate script for debug touch input? Sure. Thinking. There we go. Drop my scripts on my game objects, make sure that they are still on the origin, that is correct. And what would be the best way to do this? Um, this is a short class, that was lucky. Thinking. Why are you locked? Are you still debugging? Okay, do some cleaning.
Are you using Perforce? Yeah, I'm using Perforce in my engine project. Um, so we're going to see these question marks everywhere. It's not very exciting. I probably want above public member functions. Unity message functions. I think those will be useful in these two instances. Cool. So now we have some empty stuff. We are going to be using update. And Let's see, touches, touch count, simulate mouse with touches, and get touch returns object represent representing status of a specific touch. And I'm assuming the int is the key. Um, The int is the finger number, so I guess zero would be the index finger. Touch number zero, I guess. You don't know if they're using index and pinky or like thumb index. And let's wrap this in a touch count greater than zero. What do we got inside of current touch? Altitude, azimuth, delta position. That's what I like to see. Uh, we don't care about pressure, position. Sorry, the cat wanted to go outside. Thunderbutt, best cat in the world. Super fat. Embarrassingly fat. Do we want delta position or do we want total position? I feel like we could calculate a good a good average vector from deltas. So I'll have a list of vector threes and we will call this. This is my C sharp project, so the naming convention begins with a capital letter. Okay. Um, touch deltas. Got our delta position. <clears throat> Let's also have a boolean to let us know is touching. I feel like we have two separate logic paths here. So if they're already touching and the touch count is greater than zero, Right? I don't know if I should do a complex conditional here. It might be of us to separate them out. Let's see. If is touching and input dot touch count is greater than zero. Get the current touch, throw it into our list. Yeah, we're going to put this into separate conditions. So if we're touching and the touch count is greater than zero, then we know we added another touch, right? Else, whoa, hey.
And maybe put it to do here, consider not adding one every frame. Touch released. Oh, dang it. Man, we have sort of a logical loop here. No, I don't want to use office. Go away. Ah, you know what we could do? We could assign it to a conditional result here. If is touching. What else do we have in current touch? Delta position, finger ID. Hmm. Altitude and azimuth. Interesting. Nothing too good there. So let's break it down. Press start recording. Keep recording until I let go. Aha, else if touch deltas dot length, oh, sorry, count, this is a list, is greater than zero. So if this is false and the count is greater than zero, then we just released. Do our good old friend the for loop. Vector three average. Oh, <laughs> I touch. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. And let's divide this by a float, just to be certain. And we'll clear it out. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if putting a debug thing was really a great idea. Like, I could just have a function in in this class where I debug the points. But I've done it. Let's stick with it. Debug touch, <clears throat> and we'll say debug touch dot draw. Oh, the deltas, the deltas. We would need a starting position, wouldn't we? Sure, let's store a starting position. If is touching, 
And then if the delta's count is equal to zero, we know this is our first. So touch start. We need access to current touch. So I'll move that up. Store the position. Debug touch draw points. And we'll pass it touch deltas and touch start. Oh, draw points. And this is going to take in a vector three deltas and a vector three start. Oh, hey, we want a list of vector threes. Uh, we are also going to need a rect transform for point container. And I guess we'll also need a prefab. Ooh, I don't know how much I like that. Let's call this debug. So our touch input, we will let it know about our debug touch. There we go. Let's clear you out. And, you know, I don't even have a UI in here. That is pretty awesome. I want an image. Don't they have all kinds of cool 2D objects? Sprite mask. No, I thought they had like a circle. Knob. That looks good to me. Let's scale it down a lot. Maybe eight by. Oh, this new system is so bad. Eight by eight. It's impossible to tell because I've got stars. Let's do a nice hot red. Oh, sure. That looks fine. So this will be our debug point prefab or debug point. Touch input debug. So it's prefabbered. Uh, let's create our empty game object. This is going to be the whole of the screen. Oh my gosh, that kills me. Do I really have to hit Enter zero, tab, enter zero. I guess it's okay. Just takes some getting used to. So we've got our container. Uh, let's drop our prefab here. Our container here. Sure, let's just do a simple... You might be wondering why I'm not using for each. Um, for each, 
allocates memory inside of the loop, so I am told, and that is very, very bad for performance, especially, oh, hello, how's it going, Duel, you still here? I'm sorry, I was lost in trying to figure out what's going on. Nope, he's gone. I'm so sorry, Duel. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, right. So, um, I do not want to be allocating memory inside of a tight loop. Not a great idea, especially on constrained hardware like handheld devices. So, I'm just going to use a classic for loop. So let's do a vector three position equals start. And I'm going to instantiate my debug point prefab. The parent is going to be the container. And I do parent, yeah, and position. Debug point container. Transform. And in theory, this should let us draw something with the left click on the mouse. And when we let go, we'll have a representation. Oh, oh start target. That's right, you were pointing at the old cube that we destroyed. Much better. Hey, where are you, cube updated? Oh, I'm in 2D mode. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh boy. Um Current touch delta position. Okay, that's not doing it. Maybe I'm missing some sort of bool. So it thinks we're never touching. Simulate mouse with touches. By option, by default, this option is enabled. That's what I want. Touch supported. Just to be safe. Let's see. C sharp Unity mouse simulate touch. What am I doing wrong here? It's from twenty thirteen. I guess I'm just going to have to write the code myself. That's fine. Touch may be handled with input guess, get mouse button down. Hmm, sure, okay. I'm not too sad about that. Um, <laughs> instead of touch count, let's do input get mouse button down zero. We can get rid of this here. 
and then the current touch is going to be input dot mouse position. Oh. Um I can just use this here. Touch deltas dot count. That's not what we're doing. Oh wait, touch deltas is our list. That looks correct to me. What are you complaining about? No, I'm not going to extract that method. Okay, I'm coming up on the end of it. I would like to see just a goofy red line, and I'll be happy. Hmm? Ah, not get mouse button down. Get mouse button. That makes sense. I'm trying to use better posture here. Only one. Oh, hey! Hey, tons of them. We didn't use the, the delta offset, did we? Boop. Nope. But it looks like it's in screen space correctly. Um, we should be able to translate it. Whoa! <laughs> That's way off. So it looks like mouse position, current mouse position in pixel coordinates. Is my camera the main camera? It is. So we should be able to use camera.main dot this is a screen to world to screen point screen to viewport point no which one is pixels it's not screen point array We only want to start with screen, but viewport point, these are like negative zero and one. The mouse position is in pixels. Hey, yeah, let's try it. Okay, well, I got something going on here. Mouse two. What do we call that? UI position. What a terrible plan. Push position. Already in screen coordinates. Do not need any transformations. Just pass it to anchored position. Hey -o. Okay. <clears throat> So 
So I'm going to create a new point. Okay, component rect transform anchored position equals position. Interesting. Is this because my UI point container is stretched? I doubt it, but it's worth a shot. Same. Sure is a lot of points. Position point three. Hmm. Well, it seems like we're out of time for today. I didn't get too much done that I wanted to. But such is life when you're ramping back up to speed on a project. I'm pretty sure there's something just really goofy that I'm doing wrong. Um, you know what? Let's change before I give up. Let's just store the positions. Oh. Oh. I am storing the positions. Almost no change. Let's double check. Let's print out what positions we're getting. Oh, oh, no screen to viewport point. Input mouse position. Hey, that's not bad. We're still off a little bit. That's a little bit weird. Pretty fun though. What about this side? Are we mirrored or something? Okay, so it looks like everything is offset from the center. Um, that should be fixable easily by putting this anchor at zero, zero. Oh my gosh. Oh, anchors. Still not quite, but going much better. At least now we have, we can draw in the bottom right quadrant. If I draw in the top right quadrant, um, we're still going out here. It's almost like I need to subtract half and half. Uh, let's see what happens when I click in the very bottom here. So this is at nearly zero. And zero, zero is this corner here. So. Let's move it. There we go. Nice. Jump, 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 jump. Excellent. Well, I'm glad that I got that working. Never give up, never surrender. It's absolutely horribly inefficient code, but I don't care. 
Now I can actually see the hotspots where the user clicked. And eventually I should be able to calculate the average, draw a line between that, and then we can do some more math. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a good day. And now that I'm back on it, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.